A Napa guy knows the only way you'd give a freshly minted driver a brand new car is if he promises to never drive it. Instead, let him grind the gears and knock over the neighbor's mailbox in something a little more suited to his skill level. And with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, he can safely drive something that's nearly as old as he is. It's not perfect, but it's perfect for him. That's Napa know-how. Well, good early evening to you folks, and thank you for tuning in with me once again to another spontaneous edition of True Conservative Radio. And of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost, and I want to thank you for tuning in with me. Once again, folks, it's been some time since I've broadcasted. I know that I've scheduled a few shows and canceled several of them, and I'm sorry for that because, well, frankly, folks, I'm just doing this to try to provide political commentary to folks who happen to appreciate it. Uh, You know, I in no way generate any kind of profit, nor do I give two rat's asses about generating profit from this uh, broadcast. I just really appreciate that there's people out there that are actually willing to listen and understand and beyond this ridiculous mumbo-jumbo that we call a political system out here, I mean, our, our political system has legitimately turned, and, and everybody who knows me understands that uh, the whole system, in my view, has turned an absolute pussified perspective. The absolute pussification of America has been implemented because feminism has anesthetized America. And there's a lot of things I want to talk about this evening, folks, and that's why I'm saying uh, the title of this program is, if you're a true conservative, then listen to this show, because we should have some serious discourse about the subject matters at hand that nobody seems to discuss anymore. And I want everybody who happens to be out there listening to this program, I want to hear your take on this. All right, I scheduled this show for an hour and a half. It may be a little shorter. It may be a little longer. It really just depends on whether or not I'm feeling if people are actually absorbing this commentary. And and whether you're live or in the archive, you have to understand, folks, this is why I don't come up on here as frequently. Everybody out here, every time I turn on the boob tube and hear some moron being interviewed, bubbling over his own tongue like a jag-off out here, I get sick and tired of hearing the absolute ridiculous mumbo-jumbo coming out of these morons' mouths. It's stupid. These people are morons out here. They're just completely absent-minded to the fact that we are living in a day and age where the American dream and what we know of as America and the good old American days, it's gone, folks. I mean, don't you morons understand that? But you see, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, try to beat it in your head. I mean, if you people want to go ahead and you get on your knees and bow down to socialism and bow down to quasi-communism, bow down to feminism. But that's your problem, folks. That's your problem. If you're going to let political correctness subjugate you like a little weakling, well, then that's your problem, folks. But that isn't my problem. And let me tell you something. There's a lot of things that this ridiculous ideology can have because let me tell you something. This idiot Karl Marx, this Karl Marx piece of trash, he said that communism was a specter, a specter overtaking Europe. Well, let me tell you something, folks. That specter has come about here in America today, and it really doesn't matter which way you look at it in the political perspective. I've been saying it doesn't matter if you're for John Turncoat McCain or Barack Hussein. It doesn't matter. I'm a conservative. I'm a lifelong conservative. I've lived my whole entire life with a conservative lifestyle, the conservative principles out here. And I'm a lifelong Republican. I've been voting Republican up until here recently when I'm realizing that there really is no difference between these two pieces of crap uh, parties out here. And then you have to understand why, okay? You have to understand why the power-hungry autocrats that you and I send to office, all right? Why aren't they voting our direction, our conscience, if you will? We sent them to office, right? We voted. We went under the little curtain and did the little punch card or the little 
computer crap or whatever mechanism you use to vote, we go in there hoping that these pieces of trash will actually represent us in this bureaucracy of government and actually vote our conscience out here. But you see, folks, and this is what I say time and time again, the reason they don't vote your conscience, the reason they vote against your interest, and you can look back at any congressman, any senator, look them up for yourself, they voted against your interest so many times it would slap you upside your face and smack you in the next week. They have voted against your interest because you, you as the American person, has just completely fallen asleep at the wheel. You don't give two rat's asses about the American dream or the American way of life or the American government. I mean, if you morons recollect correctly, because nobody seems to worry about the Constitution, nobody seems to even remember about the Constitution anymore, and this is why I always say to anybody who's listening, I am not joking about this. You piece of crap, you need to go and print out a, a copy of the Constitution, put it in your pocket, and walk around with it. All right? Just walk around with a copy of the Constitution to show that you actually give two rat's asses about this country. I mean, that's all I'm saying. Anyway, folks, the bottom line is, folks, I mean, it, it's just getting haywire out here. And for conservatives, for folks that actually care about the uh, the absolute moral sanctity of, 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 of things like marriage... Things like uh, uh, family, things like uh, having some sort of moral decency in society, that's going out the window. We are morally bankrupt. And because we send these power-hungry autocrats to Washington, and they have voted against our interests because we've fallen asleep at the wheel, not me, most of you morons out there in America have been asleep at the wheel, now we are almost economically bankrupt, and now everybody's wondering why. Everybody, well, well, why is it? Why? What's happening? I'll tell you what's happening, folks. You better welcome yourself in to the new corporate socialist America, folks, because either way you look at it, whether you look at Democrats, whether you look at Republicans, it's the same crap, different plate, no matter how you try to convince yourself otherwise, folks. I'm a conservative, damn it. I'm a damn conservative. And this Republican Party right now that has been hijacked by the feminists and the liberals tries to convince me as a conservative. It's convinced a lot of my fellow conservatives out here, I'll tell you that right now. And it shocks me. But they're trying to convince me as a conservative to go back on conservative principles that molded my life, that molded my frame of thought out here. This is what this new Republican Party is trying to tell to us conservatives out here. This new Republican Party out here is trying to make it okay for single-parent families to be the majority of the day. They want us to accept the moral depravity and the sexual promiscuousness and the violence on television and music and all the garbage that influences our children's lives. They want us to accept this garbage. And we have. It's, 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 just, it's just stupid out here. I can't believe that America is what we have come to know. This is corporate socialism at its finest, folks. And I really don't know what's going on in the future. I know that folks that have been listening to me on a consistent basis, whether live or in the archive, I get plenty of emails from you folks that understand that I'm a, a decent prognosticator of political futures, if you will, but I don't know what in the blue hell is going to happen to our future. I predicted this economic downfall about a year ago, and you can look back in the archives if you don't believe me, but I expected this economic debacle to happen after Christmas. I mean, that's why they initiated this stimulus package check. They thought that by initiating this stimulus package check that it would hold over the economic danger that we are seeing presently uh, until after January when everybody's already fine and dandy from Christmas and the holidays. Let me tell you something, folks. I'm not trying to be somebody who's going to be a hyper-sensationalist. I've been accused of that many times. I'm a realist. I'm a realist, and I'm a conservative, and I can smell the the, the, the rat in the room out here, folks, and it's not pretty. 
It's not pretty, folks. Anyway, uh, sorry to get off on that rant there, folks. Uh, 646-652-4869 is the number to call. I believe we do have a caller here from the 817 area code. You're on the air. Hey, you know, I've been listening to you online, and I like what you're talking about. You know, it's about damn time somebody out there. i gotta, I got to find you on the Internet on some website. I can't see this on the media or nothing. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for for that because let me tell you what the media is. The media is a corporate conglomeration, a multinationalist corporation, and what they want to do is just keep it all in the media family, if you will. That's why they're out here giving us nothing but sensationalistic stories like the, oh, look, look, uh, Paris Hilton has got a rodent on her crotch or something as ridiculous as that instead of talking about subject matters that should really affect us like single-parent families becoming the majority of the day. And let's get to the root of the problem. Why, why is that happening? I mean, why, why are we being subjugated with uh, sexual depravity and violence out here? Why? You know, it's just all the morals and all the family values that I was raised on. You know, I'm calling you from Texas, so. Uh, I live in Texas, too, sir. Uh, let me tell you something. It, it, the stench of it has gotten down here. Let me tell you, we're independent-minded down here in Texas. And let me tell you, I don't know if you've been south of Austin, Texas. It's just an absolute cesspool. Yeah, yeah. It just you got guys holding hands and and all sorts of crap like that all everywhere that I've seen when I was down in that area. It, it, it's really unfortunate. And, and and the bottom line is is these folks that want to par- participate in in deviant activity, let them do it in the privacy of their own homes. Just keep it the hell out of the public sight. But now. You know, they got these liberals, and they've hijacked the Republicans, sir. It's not like Republicans are going to help this problem. The Republican Party could give a rat's ass about these problems. They're more worried about uh, who the hell knows what they're worried about. They're more worried about implementing socialism their way. The Democrats are worried about implementing socialism their way. It's ridiculous, and I can't believe that there's nobody else talking about this crap. But all in the while, the American family has been destroyed. The American family has been substituted with single-parent families out here. And what happens in single-parent families? Well, single-parent families have to go and they have to get some entitlement programs because they can't do it on their own. And what happens, they become more and more subjugated by the state. I'm talking about the children. They're in uh, state-funded child care, state-funded schools. I mean, this is scary stuff out here. I mean, I'm starting to take wind of this. You know, people used to call me a hyper-sensationalist or something, but I don't understand. Anyway, that, that fella uh, get, got disconnected. I'm sorry, sir, that you got disconnected, but I want to thank you for calling in and uh, giving me that uh, vote of confidence there, sir. Uh, if you'd like, you can go ahead and give me a call. And as a matter of fact, if you have anything, uh, if you have anything that you don't like, Go ahead and give me a call, 646-652-4869 is the number to call, all right? But the bottom line is, folks, is that I can't stand the crap that's happening here in America. I mean, am I the only one here that can see this garbage? Am I the only one here that can actually smell the stench of, of liberalism and feminism? I'm glad that there's some people that are actually listening in and actually taking in what I'm t- saying here. And this is... Political conservative commentary, social commentary. I mean, just take it. Whether you agree or disagree with my political perspective, just take it and understand that this is not America anymore, folks. This is some kind of liberal or feminist hellhole. I don't know what in the blue hell we're living in out here. Whatever happened to conservative ideology? Whatever happened to morality in America? Whatever happened to fiscal conservatism? Whatever happened to the American way, for Christ's sake, damn it? Whatever happened to this crap? Anytime anybody tries to pose a question in that fashion or in that nature, people look at you like you just took a dump on their damn suit or something. This is what makes me sick. This is not America anymore, folks. I mean, these power-hungry autocrats in Congress and in the Senate basically gave up, all right, gave our money, not only our money, your grandchildren's money, your great-grandchildren's money, 
To who? To the financial institutions. And I, I hate to keep repeating this, but I can't believe that there's nobody else talking about this crap. All right? But to the financial institutions that cause this economic debacle. Now, what are they going to do with this $750 billion? Well, they're going to take it, and they're going to put it in their banks, and they're going to lend our money, our taxpaying dollars, your money, the money that's taken out of your check every time you sweat, bleed, and work for that paycheck. They take it out, and now it's going to these damn financial institutions that caused this crap, and they're going to take the money and lend it back to you, folks. That's the most funniest part about this sick, cruel joke. They're going to take our money, and they're going to lend it back to you via home loans, via car loans, via business loans, with high percent interest. And you want to know why it's going to be high percent interest, folks? Because they're going to use this stupid financial debacle as a reason to charge over 20% on your money. <laughs> I hate to say this, folks. I wish I was joking. I really wish I was just pulling this out of my derriere. But, uh, no, I, I'm not. I'm really not pulling this out of my derriere. We're living in this society, folks. We are living in this America. This is the new corporate socialist America. And you know what the sick part about it is, folks? If you read about socialism, or if you go into the theory and you read about idiots who wrote about it, I mean, that made it sound like it's a great utopia. As a matter of fact, there are several European countries right now living in a form of socialism. And they're getting all kinds of great benefits. Don't you understand that? I mean, I mean, are we getting the raw deal of socialism or something? Huh? I mean, isn't socialism supposed to take care of people out here? Everybody's suffering their asses off. We're living in a new corporate socialist America, and you've got people in America begging they're begging to give their money, their taxpaying money, to the people that caused the debacle. <sighs> Folks, I wish I was joking. I wish America was just a little bit more brighter out here, but they're not. And this is why sometimes I get emails from folks that are you know, always criticizing me that I'm just a little bit too hostile, that I'm a little bit too cruel, I'm a little bit too vulgar. But the bottom line is, folks, if it takes vulgarity, if it takes screaming, if it takes fury, if it takes passion, whatever it takes, take this damn commentary, put it in that noggin of yours, and start doing something about it. How hard is that, folks? I mean, seriously, how hard is that? I mean, there's so many problems in America. What's unfortunate about a program like this, folks, and it's basically like a narrative blog, if you will. I, I, I love this forum, if you will. I love this medium of being able just to talk to folks, being able to talk to folks at any time. Oh, excuse me, this is my cell phone. I happen to be a uh, happen to be a business owner, so you got a lot of people calling me. I'm, excuse me, let me go ahead and ignore this call here. Anyway, folks, I lost my train of thought, but the bottom line is is that this forum allows people like you and me to be able to discuss subject matters and to be able to dissect every single fashion of our lives, whether it's social, whether it's economical, whether it's political, whether it's spiritual. It really doesn't matter. We have the freedom to do this. But nobody participates in it. Here we are. We're living in a day and age where we are in the Internet. We are on the Internet. You have billions upon billions of libraries at your fingertips. And what are people doing? What are people doing with this technology? They're looking at pornography 24 hours a day. All right? They're getting on, uh, uh, you know, chat rooms to become sexual predators out here for Chris Hansen uh, and, and Dateline or whatever the crap. This is what people are using the Internet for. Depraved purposes. I mean, don't you understand that you have reading materials that people would have killed for back some long time ago? I mean, don't you people understand that, you stupid bona fide morons? 
I mean, I sit here and I attempt with true passion and with true fury to understand the psychology of someone who wants to submit to their own socialism, folks. Because let me tell you, it's not just a liberal Democratic Party. It's the Republican Party. It's these jagoffs that are attempting to call themselves conservatives. They're all bowing down with their knees to corporate socialism, but I, as a true conservative, will not go quietly in that good night. And let me tell you something, folks. I know I'm breathing hard right now. I know I say a lot of things. I'm screaming. I got my blood pressure rolling. But the bottom line is, folks, I said, oh, don't I don't care if I have a damn coronary right here on the on the air for Christ's sake, because I want Americans to start understanding that this is still America, you piece of trash. We still have the Constitution before somebody starts wiping their ass with that. We still have America, you stupid morons. Why don't you wake up out of your stupid daydream for Christ's sake? Start participating in your government on a local level, on a state level. You morons are just sitting there on your thumbs. You people, I mean, most of these people in America have a Kentucky Fried Chicken Grease thumb up their dairy ears wondering how good it feels. But it doesn't feel good, does it? It doesn't feel good because that's exactly what this damn government is doing to us now. That's exactly what this social movement, feminist movement, liberal movement, that's what it's doing to us right now. And I just don't understand why nobody else is talking about this. I don't understand why nobody else is talking about the moral depravity, the economic bankruptcy, the, the international turbulence. I don't understand why nobody else is talking about this crap. I'm going into chat rooms. I'm going into blogs. I'm going into forums. And what are these morons talking about? They're talking about dumbass, ridiculous lipstick on pigs. They're talking about dumbass, ridiculous $300,000 dresses. They're talking about ridiculous garbage that doesn't affect you and I as American people. And it makes me sick. It makes me want to puke. I better calm down, folks. I better calm down before I have a damn coronary on this microphone. But let me tell you something. If I do, I really don't give a rat's ass. Because let me tell you something, I'm a conservative, damn it. I'm a true conservative. I, I don't want my children to have teenage pregnancies. All right? I don't want my, my daughter to bow down to some muff-diving, fruity-ass feminist like uh, Gloria Steinem or something. I don't want that crap. I want an America like it used to be, folks. Do you remember that? It wasn't that long ago. It wasn't that long ago when you could be born in America, and with hard work, perseverance, persistence, and patience, folks, you could be born into nothing and create something out of your life. But in this new corporate socialist America, that isn't going to be possible anymore, you stupid bona fide morons. But you people insist on getting on your knees and say, please, take my taxpaying money and do it what you wish. Uh, do it what you wish, excuse me. And what they're willing to do with it, they're going to they're do this. They're going to take your money, they're going to put it in their pockets, they're going to lend it back to you with over 20% interest, and you're going to pay for it like a bona fide Nimrod, with all due respect. And it's disgusting. You people need to understand, folks, that this isn't America anymore, and we need to get back to conservative principles, conservative ideology. And let me tell you something. The, the, the first thing you can do is, as somebody who wants to participate is don't acknowledge feminism. Don't accept feminism. Don't accept liberalism. Don't even acknowledge it. Don't accept it. All right? I mean, you notice if you're a real conservative, if you're a true conservative, rather, and you're around a, a group of liberals or feminists and you happen to say that you're a conservative, these morons will try to gang up on you and make you feel like you're yay small because you're a damn conservative and you actually have moral principle, for Christ's sake. They actually make you think there's something wrong with you. That's what I'm saying, folks. Don't even acknowledge it. Don't even accept it. Don't, don't pallet it, for Christ's sake. Ah, sorry, folks. Anyway, 646-652-4869 is the number to call. 
You are listening to True Conservative Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. You can get back to me at my website at uh, ipolitik.net slash ghost. That's I-P-O-L-I-T-I-C dot net slash G-H-O-S-T, folks. And you can get back to me uh, and... We'll see what's happening. Hopefully you're a true conservative. You're a bedwetting liberal or a muff-diving feminist. Well, get the hell out of the way. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take a caller here. Let me see if we can get these people on the on the, on the air here. Hello? Yes. Hey, how you doing? I'm all right, and you? This is uh, Vader. Vader? Yes, Vader. Uh- Okay, I was, Vader. I was, I, was, I was hearing your ranting about conservatism, and yeah. your conservative and your conservative nonsense is over. I'm a corporate socialist, and we will have your children, and we already do because of the great glorious Simon feminism. We destroyed the little people's families and make them bow down to the rich while they get peanuts. We Oh uh, wait a minute! Now, now, what are you? Are you some sort of a wealthy person or something? Or, or is that what you're trying to convey to the audience here? That you're some sort of wealth or some crap? Does it really matter? It well, doesn't change anything for the little people, and they don't. Oh well, so it. you're? Are you? Are you a little person? I am not a little person. You're not a little person. I'm higher middle class. You're higher middle class, so wouldn't that technically yeah, make I, you a wouldn't I, that technically been, make you a little I, person? I've been well, not in, not in the hierarchy. I'm a lot higher than the little people that want to work for little you know places just to get by and shit out six kids, and you know their children will join the military. And I'm not sugarcoating shit. It's good for them. They need a purpose, or they need to go. Especially so, the Mexican children. Well, let's not get racial here, all right? I mean, you know, you're you're a caller. We don't want, uh, you know, this show to get taken off the air by the blog talk radio censors out here because some bona fide moron is a racist now. Okay, okay I'll you, keep it clean then. What but, but you're, you what, know what I mean. What you're telling me is that, well, I don't know, what what are what exactly are you telling me? I'm telling you that the the age of the American dream is over. They've had their chance, and now they have to suck it up and work to die, work to get my pockets fatter. And they don't seem to care. You can see as nobody calls in because they really don't give a rat's ass about their children. They want peanuts, and they're happy so, with it. So, no, 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 let me – now, look, I don't know if you're a prank caller. I don't know if you're real, but – Let's just go with this, because let me tell you, I've been hooping and hollering about these damn American people not doing a damn thing, so I'm going to roll with this. So what you're saying to me is that these people out here in America are working to die, quote, unquote, and that's your quote. Well, you, you, you give me another reason why they're working. They're, they're working to chase a dream that doesn't exist, and they had the opportunity to make this last a long time, and they just gave it back to the bank. So it's either if you can't beat them, join them, or or go into the jungle, and that's uh, it. And, uh, no, and and you can see, you know, Mr. Ghost, I don't know you or anything, you know, but you sound you're ranting and raving is useless because these people are useless. Well, They've I don't. They've been given I don't, a purpose uh, in the wait, age wait of globalization minute. without with without the purposes of the age of globalization. Now, wait, wait they a would minute. Be now, I don't. I don't believe. Tacos. Excuse me, I don't believe people are useless. All right, now, granted, I think that the majority of the American public sucks right now. But the reason I think that the majority of the American public sucks is because of their lack of intellectual insight about their political government that actually dictates what happens in their lives. And I think that the reason that they don't inquire about their government or even have the slightest idea about what their government's doing to their lives is because these morons are being anesthetized with a feminized and liberal education in the government-funded education system, and what's unfortunate is that they don't teach you how to participate in your government in this public education. The, all they teach yeah, you how to do... That's a parental responsibility. Why don't the parents teach their children? Well, that's... 
pick up a book and teach their children. They don't care. It's, it's, they, they have daycares, and now they have adult daycares. Instead of work release, you know when you're in jail and you have to get work release to go outside and, you know, start a life where they're, they're work intake. They want the same living. They like the prison life outside of prison. And that's all they are, paper robots. That's all they'll ever be from here on out. There will be no revolution. If there is, it will be crushed because the leaders of this country can crack the planet in half, and there's nothing anyone can do, and it's not, and nobody cares. Nobody gives a, a, a crap. Nobody no. gives a crap. Nobody cares. So you mean to tell me that my passion, my fury, and you can listen to a countless of archive segments that I've done on this, on this uh, Blog Talk Radio Network, you mean to tell me that all I'm doing out here is blowing a bunch of hot air and that all these people that are out here, uh, you know, just living, uh, unfortunately under the influence of feminist and liberal ideology and suggestive uh, uh, thought processes through the mainstream liberal media, you mean to tell me that nobody really cares that they actually like the fact that, uh, you know, there's women shitting out about five or six kids from five or six different fathers, that they actually like the social depravity that we're living in? You, are you are you love actually it. selling they, me this they crap? Love it. They, they love it like that cheap Popeye fried chicken. They love it. You are a last of a dying breed, and nobody will stand up with you, Mr. Ghost. Ghosty. Nobody will stand with you. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about their children. They want to, they, they, they rather, you know, try, try to have a good time on their children's dimes. So they, when they look at their babies in the face, they look at, hey, I'm going to have a great time because he's it's going to suffer. It's going to suffer. And it will. Look outside. Look at all these young men dying. And I understand. I'm pro corporate socialism. But, you know, you, you have to understand that what is is what is. But these people give their children up for the grab just for a a better living just for two dollars more an hour at their silly job that a robot could probably do. Okay, See, you know everyone that has family, you care about your family. I understand if you care about your family, you do what you got to do. But these people do not care about their family. You know, they no, rather I'm, see their child go into a, a military that they know nothing about, just like joining a gang because their friends did it. Now, look, I'll just go along with this because let me tell you, I've had a couple of. Uh, shows uh, some time back about, you know, the American I've, I've public ideology. I've been ideology. listening to your shows, Mr. Ghost. Oh, you've been listening I've to my listening. shows? Well, well, I've been thinking. I thank you very much. But the, 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 the problem is, is that I've tried to fathom the thought process about the American public on why they're allowing themselves just to submit to corporate socialism, why the American public is just not giving two rats asses about freedoms being taken away from them and uh, uh, th this uh, feminist uh, takeover of people's mentality, the liberal takeover, uh, you know, how our government is selling not only us out, but uh, our great-great-grandchildren out with this $750 billion bailout package. And I tried to fathom this a couple of uh, shows back, okay? Now, you're meaning, and this is what I thought. Now, before you say anything, this is what I thought. I thought that the reason the American public isn't doing anything about the uh, debacle that's happening, not only on the moral front, economic front, political front, but on every single front that is our uh, political and social structure, I said it was one of two things. It was either that the American public just doesn't care, or that the American public actually wants it to get worse. Now, what you're saying to me, and I don't, I mean, you're saying some outlandish things here. I don't even know your name. What's your name? Vader. Oh, yeah, you Vader. Call me I forgot. Vader. Vader. I don't I have to say my name in public. Do you really think a corporate socialist that, you know, promotes these kinds of idea, ideology, you think that, you know, if, if people didn't know my name, they wouldn't come and stone me rather than the people that actually created this illusion? Don't you think that some of the people in the mid-level of the hierarchies of these societies know this? But, hey, if you can't beat them, join them. And if anybody, nobody else cares, hey, you know, what are you going to do? You know, we live in a time where people abort children. They promote homosexuality. I they agree. It's disgusting. Children. I they agree. They don't care about themselves. 
you know, they, they, they go out and throw their babies and mistreat them, you know, and they hit them. And then the CPS and these institutions take their children and raise them for them while they go out to these clubs and bars and associations so they can have a good time, not caring about the next generation. All they need is one generation, and it's already happened, and they still don't care. They've been given a good life, a good opportunity, and all these people had to do was just take it away for them for a little while. Just take it away. And these people have just bowed down because they want a little better of a breath. And let me tell you something, Mr. Ghost. When there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Now look around you. These are dead people walking. They are dead people walking. They're nothing but lost souls. And when they die, they're going to be here watching, waiting, suffering, watching their children suffer because of a silly mistake. They're going to have that scowl they already have in their life, in their, in, their, in their low level of living, should you say, just for, you know, a little can of beans and a can of, you know, a can of, you know, corn, and they have an extra, you know, day that they can go to a restaurant and have a good time. Yeah, it's yeah. Their it's show gonna, short. Listen, I understand. I've been yelling about this for a long period of time that people are just oblivious exactly. to all this. They're, but what you're calling, gone. hold on, you're calling and actually advocating this type of activity, though. You think it's a great thing that corporate socialism is taking effect. You actually think it's a great well, thing. Well, I'm, 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 I'm a mason, and I'm not going to, I'll let it show. And I know it's well, stupid, but hey, I have to tell you something, man. These people do not care. They don't care about themselves. They don't care about their children. And the game's already over. They played a game that doesn't exist. The dollar does not exist. It is a paper. They can let it go and do whatever they want. And without the will of the people, nobody has power. But these people willingly give up their children for indoctrination and robotism is what I call or zombieism. And they give their children away from, to these ideas that are completely ridiculous. And if they're going to give those ideas, well, me and the people that are at my inner circle are going to have a great time on their stupidity. And because I'm not going to sit here and wallow in the crap with everyone else while everyone's playing a game of Monopoly. They can't win because the rules have already been changed a long time ago. And they don't want to fuck. They don't even, they don't even care. They don't want to know. They completely well, are you know, oblivious. Look, look, I, I don't, I don't agree with where you're coming from on this. Yeah, I obviously have a cynical view. I unfortunately have a care for these people, and uh, and, and not just these people, but families and the American family and the family unit. Well, I mean, that that's the essence of humanity is family. I mean, if you look back at the most earliest archaeological evidence, it shows that. The essence of humanity was family, a, a man and a woman raising children. And now we're going completely against that because of this ridiculous ideology. Now, I can agree with you to a certain, ex to a certain extent uh, about people being zombies and basically just not caring out here. I mean, these people are, are dumping their kids off on illegal alien child care providers or in front of a boob tube or, or a damn violent video game. While they're going out hunting and trotting or trying to become some corporate mogul or being some single parent, I mean, it's just it's ridiculous about what's happening to our social structure out here. And it makes sense, you know, because I always call these people zombies and, you know, all kinds of other names in the book because they're not talking, all right? I mean, they're not talking about these issues. Nobody wants to talk about it. You got the mainstream media actually inducing this crap into us. Sexual depravity, sexual promiscuousness, uh, violent acts. I mean, that's all we hear about, for Christ's sake. And it's ridiculous. And I think that what we need to do as American people is we need to wake up out of our stupid, dumb, mesmerized dream out here and start understanding that this reality around us, this matter, everything that's around us right now is real, and we need to deal with it right now, damn it! And I don't understand why nobody's even given two rats asses about it. Caller, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm listening to you. And I would have agreed with you maybe 15, 15 years ago. However, it's 15 years too late. You know, if, if the hippies were bought out, anybody else is going to be bought out. And that's it. You know, all, all this ranting and raving you have, you know, $2 billion 
will change more than the United States ranting and raving and all the crying and whining they will ever do. You want to know why? Because the dollar rules their minds. They, they, it's like a computer. They have been uploaded. They, they, have, they have information uploaded into their mind just like a robot. I believe if we created, if, if, if robots were put into work environments, they would be more useful than these paper robots. We wouldn't really need them at all. Now, there was a time that I actually did care about, you know, children and, you know, their, their education and the food, but, you know, it's not an individual's responsibility. It's a nation's responsibility. That's what people don't understand. And if people aren't willing to take the time to teach these children the right, right way of thought, you know, teach them the Constitution, teach them the amendments, the Bill of Rights, you know, that teach them everything that created this great free society for them, well, then, hey, you know, look, why should I do it? Why should you do it? Do you understand where I'm coming from? Nobody's well, calling in for, 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 for the principles of moral integrity and a different moral principle, at least for a globalist purpose. They're not doing that. They're not calling in to state their opinions. They're not calling in saying, hey, I'm taking time out of my life, you know, taking time out of my life to make the world a better place. Everything that's good is completely hypocritical because it's governed by economics, which brings out the worst in people. Anybody can be bought off. Everybody is a Judas, and I'm definitely not Christian, but, yes, I was born again. Like I said, I do follow, you know, Jesus Christ because, he was the Serpent for Ptolemy the 15th, and he's within the bloodlines of everything I stand for. All these people are nothing, and they're born to be nothing. And they have been given purpose through economics out of their own free will because so that's you, what they want. You know, it is some what interesting. This is some interesting and yet neurotic commentary, but I, I'm, I'm rolling with it here. So you're telling me that people are out here basically selling nobody, themselves nobody, out? Nobody, 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 nobody will know they're selling their children, their babies. You look at these poor little babies. Of course, hey, you have to understand, you know, I've cremated my care, but I, was, I have to. Because in order to live in an economic society, you have to not care about anybody or yourself. You have to care about the people in your inner circle and that's it. Because these people, economics, you have to deplete care. You have to deduce humanity because that's what it is. Economics is just like an, uh, a, a real-time artificial intelligence. That's all it is. That's so, implementing AI in our daily lives. That's all you it know, is. You're, you're, talking, you're talking as if uh, you know, economics is some sort of social wizardry or something. That's, you see, that's my point. That's exactly what it is. You ever want a magician? You know, you see, a, you see an illusionist? on stage and you wonder how the hell is he doing that? Well it's no it's not magic, it's nothing special. You know, sure, you know, conjuring of spirits and things like that, that does happen. Even through the leaders of which created this country. Yes, yeah, sure, Thomas Edison, you know, Crowley, Cromwell, all, all these people, yes, yeah, sure. You know? Well let's not let's not but, get too but, let's not let's not get too new age here. I don't wanna hear I, I don't wanna hear any of that new age who you're getting you're losing me with the new age hooey. That definitely is not new age. That is old age, all the way back to the beginning. Now, these people have bowed to an illusion that doesn't even exist. That's not even an illusion. It's right there in their face. I don't understand if it was something supernatural, but this is a piece of paper. And these people don't care. They'll do anything for pieces of paper. And yeah, I but, but no, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, you see, once again, you're, you're, you're putting yourself and the people that you are supposedly affiliated with on a higher pedestal than the average everyday American person. Are you saying because that you... Because they are. The, the idea, the wizardry, makes them God. That's what well, they don't understand. It makes them God. They can crack the earth. They can clone children. They can manipulate genes on how the outcome of a baby is going to be, if they're going to be better at running or thinking, or they're going to be a genius, white, black. There is no more morals. There's no more na natural. 
you know, nat- natural creation. Everything so, is artificial. So are, are you one of these people that, you know, and I get this debate from every goddamn liberal long hair that calls me up and tries to flap their little mealy mouth gums in the wind. They tell me that all this garbage about single-parent families being the majority of the day and women shitting out about five or six kids from five or six different fathers – that all this is somehow social evolution. And it seems to me that that is exactly what you're alluding to with this commentary, uh, how neurotic as it is, very interesting and kind to, of entertaining. I would have, I, I, look, it's not evolution. It's wizardry through the free will of the people through the acceptance of what they want. This was never supposed to happen. This was a takeover and if you can't beat them, join them, because there's not a So well, well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by just if you can't beat them, join them? Well, what are you talking about? I was once like you, Ghost. I once gave a, a shit about people. I once cared for people. I once cared for other people's children. I used to volunteer for children. I used to donate this and that, try to teach children the right ways of thinking, trying to guide people and their daily lives until I realized that they don't care about themselves. All that hard work of trying to change a person's life can be taken away with an iPod with a PS3. Well, well I, I've, I, I've alluded to that many times on the program, but don't you think that all that uh, you know notion of being so materialistic is embedded in us through our education system, the feminist movement, liberalism. I mean, this is why the family... And it, it is because their parents allow it. Well, that's what I'm saying. The, the, the family itself has been hijacked by materialism, and, you know, the only thing that motivates or should be, or should be, or should be people's prime directive of motivation in life is to go out and be a money-making machine. I mean, we, we, we're not taught to uh, appreciate the simple things in life like going outside and and being able to, you know, take a deep breath of fresh they, air. They and going are out pleased and... to be stupid. They're pleased to be stupid. They are but, pleased but, to be stupid. They but, don't but, care. Hold on, Everybody hold on has a second. TV. Everybody hold on has a second. You're saying, you're, saying, you're saying that these people don't care, all right? These people don't care, but... Don't Ignorance you think that the reason, my friend, the reason they, they don't they care? Are. Hold on, hold your stupid ass. All right, hold on. So if they hey. didn't care, if they didn't care, don't you think that the reason that they don't care is because uh, they had been indoctrinated through feminist and liberal education? I mean, you know, we're born in this world innocent. All right, sir. I mean, it's not as if you know we're born to. Be... What about when they wanted kings? They wanted kings, and they couldn't live without a king. But when, but when the king was being a glutton and enjoying his life, they they got upset because they couldn't enjoy their life, and they went and tried to kill him, and they tried to get another king so they could do the same thing again. The people are the problem. The people in this age where the people have the power. The people have always had the power, but they do not care. They don't care. They do not educate themselves. I mean, for goodness sake, there's a library in every corner where they can, you know, em- embed all the information they want to overturn the situation that's going on. There's nothing that the people cannot do. But it's everything that the people do not want to do. Well, there's some credence in that because let me tell you, these these people aren't doing a damn thing about what's going on in America. And, you know, uh, I'm, I, you know, what caught me, and the reason I'm keeping you on the horn here, because you're providing some neurotic, entertaining, yet insightful uh, uh, commentary here, because I have tried to conjure up the reason why the American public is just playing with their schlong head, while these damn uh, officials, these power-hungry autocrats in Washington, are selling out their great-great-grandchildren right from underneath their nose. And I'm trying to think to myself, why would they allow something like this? Why would they do something like this and be completely quiet about it? Are you, are you okay, sir? 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 Sir, are you all right? Oh, we're we're gonna have to put. Are you? No, I, I hear. Yeah, sir, just, just, 
an ambulance. I took a because I own I own this place. So I just went outside to speak to you, so don't see. Um, yeah, right, these right. are good. They're, they're good worker bees, and they want paper, so you have to take them paper. <laughs> are, you, are, are, you, are, you, are you are you all right? You yeah, I'm okay. I, I, are you calling? You're not calling me from the hood or anything, are you? No, it's definitely not the the ghetto. All right, well the ghetto. You know, like what I like I was alluding to earlier. I mean, we I, I try to understand and conjure up the reason why people are thinking this way, and I've deduced only two uh, thought processes that could be going through people's heads: either they don't care, or they actually want to see things get worse. And uh, you know, you're trying to make the debate that they actually don't give two rats asses. But you see, do you think that the no, reason no, that they don't give you're, two you're, rats you're, asses? You're, well, hold on. Do you think that the reason that they don't give two rats asses is because of this damn glorious Steinem-induced liberal and feminist education system? I mean, that's why our children are becoming a bunch of dumbasses. I mean, you know, right now in this day and age, if the television told them that they could drown a fish, these stupid ass clowns would actually go into their damn fish tanks and attempt to drown a damn stupid fin fish or some crap. It's ridiculous. <laughs> It's ridiculous, but the reason that people are so stupid, and, and I know you're cynical, all right? I mean, this is some real cynical commentary that you're providing here. But you have to have a little bit of faith in people, all right? People, their intuitions, I mean, there's a certain intuition that people have, and they know right from wrong. But what's unfortunate is that most of the people here in America and in most westernized countries were being indoctrinated with liberalism and feminism, which dumbs down the people and relinquishes the power of the people into people's hands like the government bureaucrats or the corporate socialists or these pieces of crap that are trying to ruin the American dream for all of us out here while the American public just sits there on their knees begging for socialism. Now, you're telling me... And they will. You're telling me that the people don't care that they're just going to let they're just going to sit by and watch this happen? Now, when when you look at a mother and you look at a mother with a baby in her stomach, she's pregnant. Now, that person, every person in this world has a conscience. They have feelings which, you know, they can uh, a process of deduction of of the of difference between right and wrong. They have those feelings. They know that killing a child that's inside them is wrong. It's absolutely wrong. But out of their own free will, they give their conscience to depletion, and they go ahead and do what's better for them, not thinking about the life they're about to have, so they can participate in the economic so, society. So what are you inferring here, sir? Are you inferring that most people that have children in this modern America – don't give a crap about them. I mean, because you've been alluding to this, uh, you know, quite frequently in this discourse here. Is that what you're suggesting? I'm saying that, that everything that is good is completely hypocritical. The human race has taken its course a long time ago. Sooner or later, people will be nothing more than chickies on a conveyor belt, and that's it. Be out of their own free will, by the way, because they don't care, and they've let their children be indoctrinated with psychotherapeutic brainwashing methods of the electrons and neutrons that are manipulated by the phosphorus, which Thomas Edison created the catheter ray tube. And every television of America, they've let these devices of indoctrination and stupidity break into their homes. They've let this happen. They have accepted this. They have accepted this. This is what they want. So you're saying that all this garbage, hold on, hold on, you're saying that all this garbage that's happening here in America, and I'm talking about everything that I've been hooping and hollering about, this is the 70th show, by the way, all right? This is the 70th show. Now, you mean to tell me I've been doing 70 shows on an average about an hour and a half long, and you mean to tell me that most of the people that are listening to this commentary right now, because we got a, quite a few people listening in, uh, you mean to tell me that these people are, are, are just morons and that, uh, you know, they're basically selling their children out? That, that's what you're saying, right? That's exactly what I'm saying. And it's very unfortunate. Like I said, there was once a time where I cared. When, when a person, a mother, a beautiful mother, a human being, 
you know, with conscious and cognitive reasoning and thought process, able to decipher wrong from right, like no other animal in this that that we know of can do. So they they have completely disregarded the American family, the American dream, the mother, the father, and the child. The only thing that holds us human together in modern day, and they have let it go because these men do not have the ball to teach their women, and these women do not care about anything but what they are indoctrinated with, and they accept it, and even if you told them, they wouldn't care. It's like a woman, and she divorces the husband and gets with another man, and he starts beating her, but he pays her a little bit. But he beats her, and she goes with a black eye, and she still says, hey, okay, my life is great. My life is chill, show it. But it's well, really I've, not. I've, she's, I've she's, talked she's, about that many times. I've talked about that many times about how the feminist movement has basically and in equated. The process, in the process, they don't think about the child that they had with this other individual, this other male figure that they should have not made that decision based on their emotions. Remember, this is economics. You cannot have emotions in an economical situation and in, in a society of economics. So, okay, you now, let, let me get, get this away. straight. Hold on, let me get this straight. You're saying and that the, the whole concept... Hold on, and, hold, on and hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. You're trying to say to me that, that economics is actually socially engineering society to a point where single-parent families are just going to be the end-all and that uh, children are just basically going to be raised by the state. That's why we have all these entitlement <laughs> programs. That's why we have all this uh, welfare and all this garbage. You mean to tell me exactly that that is the, that's the end result? I mean, because this is what you're saying to me here, and it's, uh, I think it's rather neurotic and, and kind of uh, nutty, but yet entertaining and intriguing commentary. Uh, but but that's what you're saying. That's what you're alluding to, right? Is that economics is basically socially engineering society to a point where uh, women are basically going to be at will shitting out about five or six kids from five or six different fathers. The men are going to be, you know, pussified uh, Richard Simmons pansy asses, and uh, you know everybody's going to live under corporate socialism, and everybody's going to like it because they're going to beg for it by their own free will. This is coming out of your Wait. commentary that you've been Wait. providing here for the past half hour. Am I correct or am I not correct? What do you think this so-called war is about? Have you ever seen an Islamic individual, an Islamic family come to America and slowly just change their thought process? The woman starts talking. They start losing the burqa. You know, their children become little shitheads. And they become a, 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 ignorant, arrogant uh, t t TV products. If they were back in Islam, they still have, you know, what 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 they believe in, you know, what their 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 way of life, their culture. But once they hit the economic side of the world, which it will be the whole world, mind you, they change. So if a person that you know in you know participates in the Islamic faith can be changed by a mere piece of paper and a thought, then I would have to say yes. That's exactly what the goal is, to destroy the family, and it has been destroyed. You're right. Are you single parent family Single parent families are the norm out Let here. Let me tell you Why something. Hey, you know, there is some credence in what you're saying. Now, I know I've been saying that some of your commentary – has been somewhat nutty here, but there is some credence in what you're saying. The American family, not only the American family, but the Western family has been destroyed. 80, or was it 75% divorce rates in Australia, 70% divorce rates in Germany. I mean, it, it's barely breaking a coin flip out here in America. And, I, and let me tell you something, I think they've been cooking the books on those numbers in America as well. But the bottom line is, you're exactly right. The American family has been destroyed. I mean, if you happen to be a person who's still with the first person you married and have children with exclusively with the first person you're married, people look at you like you just farted on their Sunday dress in church or some crap. I mean, this is the new America that we're living in here, and I don't understand, and, and nobody's asking any questions about it. 
I'm the only one here on the Blog Talk Radio Network that even talks about these subject matters, and people look at me cross-eyed. People look at me like I just kicked them right in the damn nuts or something, right in the damn gonads. They don't even know what in the blue hell I'm coming from. But the bottom line is, is the that greatest, we are... The greatest thing to fear is fear itself, my friend, and these people are afraid. They're afraid of everything. They walk down the street, they're afraid. They're afraid they're going to lose their houses, their family, their children, everything they stand for, ever work hard for, they are afraid. There's nothing that they're not afraid of. They're walking around quiet. They shut up and they know their place. There's nothing that will overturn their thought process because it's not that they don't care. They're afraid to speak up. And by being afraid to speak up, eventually you cease to care. So everybody's afraid to speak up. That's why nobody's uh, out here providing any kind of decent political commentary, social commentary. You've got jag on the Blog Talk Radio Network. What does it have to do with what's wrong or right? What is wrong or right? Is it right to teach your family the right things rather than the, the robotic economic uh, paper zombie society that we live in? Why do you have to wear a short shirt and a short shirt to jog around? Why do you have to drive and keep up with the, mis- the, with the Joneses? Why do you have to do that? Why because do you have to of the social to wizardry in your, in, your, in your statements, it's because of the social wizardry of economics. According to your argument, your argument is that economics itself is being the social puppeteer of all the degradation of America and the sexual promiscuousness, the sexual depravity, the violence, teen pregnancies, and all the other social ills that have become the social norms. I mean, according to your debate, let me tell you, I'm not arguing against it. But according to your debate, it is economics that is the root of all. I mean, and, and there is, the debate. And, and, there is a cre- and there is credence in that because let me tell you, economics in most idiots' lives in America, and I'm talking about 95 percent, probably more than that, in their lives, economics take pr- takes precedence over their own liberty, and it's disgusting. These people sell their rights for a dollar. They are so they are they're so used to consequentially they are so used to this dollar this dream this peace that they will never stand up for what is right they just want to cruise along while everybody takes their rights and put them down the toilet they don't care well what about the children you know I mean after all this what about what about the children what about the children. What about the children? You know, and, 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 and my life of observation, because that's all we are. We, he, we who control the eyes control the mind. It's like Timothy Leary said. We're looking through a glass window. That's why everything we know of is in first person, not in third. We don't see ourselves, but through a mirror. We're all observers, and, a part, and we, we're all observing someone else's perception of a uh, perspective. We are just nothing but a perception of somebody else's dream. Everybody accepts it. They just want to live together. And I'm sure everybody does want peace. I'm sure that's what they want. But then it's at a higher cost than you can imagine. It's at a higher cost. These people lose and have lost their individualism. They have lost their babies. They have lost everything they stand for. They have lost their families. They have lost every love, care, feelings. They have given up their conscience, their minds, and now their bodies. Uh, They've given up their bodies. Well, it's unbelievable, you know. And, and let me tell you, I know that you're cynical and you're saying that, hey, you know, we're going to hell in the handbasket. That's all there is to it. Let's just go ahead and bow down to it. Let's bow down to, to liberalism and feminism. Let's bow down to the moral degradation of America. Let's bow down to all this moral depravity and all this crap. But let me tell you something. What? I just can't bow down to it, Vader, or whatever your name is. I just can't bow down to it. I mean, you see, I'm a conservative, damn it. I mean, I believe in the conservative ideology. It's conservatism that you know, made the society so peaceful at one point in time in American history. And I think that we need to go back to conservative principles out here. And, you know, I have all these liberals, and, and, and especially these Republicans that are trying to call themselves conservatives, that are trying to call themselves Republicans out here. They're nothing but a bunch of bedwetting liberals, liberal long hairs. If you're for damn John Turncoat McCain, you're a damn bedwetting liberal, and I ain't afraid to say it. I'm not for any of these people for president. But the it doesn't matter because all those people are related. 
These people don't even know. They, they don't even know the start, and they have no idea where it's going to end. It is going to end in a, in, in a movie worse than any grotesque, horrid, of you know, low level of feeling ending that you can ever imagine. And this is real life. They might as well stop looking at their screen and start suffering. And you're right, conservatism was the best part of what we used to stand for. It truly was. But however, it comes a price to be conservative, to be a conservative nowadays. And that price is letting go of the ideology of the American dollar, of everything that stands for America, because it's not America anymore. It's nothing but a corporation. Uh, nothing but a corporation filled with robots and empty promises and empty dreams. But everyone will accept chump change and peanuts just to get by, just to feed their, their children. They give up their lives and their conscience and their minds just for their child's body to be safe. But they don't know that their bodies are going to suffer and their conscience is going to suffer even more just by doing this. They have no idea what's going to happen to them. And they well, don't well, care at this point. Well, you know, you seem to have a lot of insight, and you yourself seem to be talking from the first person now. The only reason that I'm letting this continue to go on is because this is interesting conversation, and obviously I don't get too many callers because people don't have a pair, and they don't want to call up and actually give me their political perspective because they can't debate what I'm well, debating Mr. here. Mr. Jost, I'm on the other side of your fence, and we're looking at each other. And if there's one thing I, we both can agree on is the family issue. And I, 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 you know, I hate, I hate to dispute up, you know, because it's, it's over. It's the conservatism, all that, it, it's, it's just over. I hate what you're people one say of, that. You're one of, you're one of the last. You're definitely one of the last. It was uh, once a point in time where me and you shared the same views, but, I mean, you can't do it nowadays. You can't, you can't share that view. I mean, these people just have sold their, they have sold their consciousness. They've sold their cognitive reasoning. They accept the idea of being a, a robot, a paper robot. That's that's the prime of their lives, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're Chinese. They have destroyed their culture, their religions, even though religion is ridiculous, but they have destroyed it. They have destroyed everything they ever stand for or cared for. These people will sell their color of their skin just to be able to eat a, a meal the next day. Well, That's all they well care about. You, you see, well, what's the damn solution, you know? I mean, we are leaving this damn world to our children, our great-grandchildren, our great-great-grandchildren out here, and it looks like a, a, a damn world of holy hell. I mean, you've got a deficit out of the wazoo out here. I mean, you, you got uh, international turbulence. you got... You know, all kinds of social moral depravity. Uh, you got violence, you know, just running rampant out here. I mean, well, what's the end result there, sir? I mean, I just want your perspective. I'm, I'm curious. Well, when, when you look at these, the women, for example, they're supposed to be the mothers of our children. You have something like a Mother's Day and a Father's Day, and, yes, I heard your shows. It's something they're supposed to do. And they're being rewarded like it's something they wanted to do out of the goodness of their heart. You're supposed to raise your family. You're supposed to raise your children. You should be rewarded for something that you're supposed to do. And that's just another example of the direction that humanity has taken. I mean, look at the children. I mean, I'm sure there's a big difference from the 60s to now, and everyone is pretty obvious, that the, the, the age of children being half naked and being, you know, it's going, it's gone down to the age of two. These let, two-year-old man, children are uh, wearing let me tell you. And, 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 and these short level shirts, they haven't even developed yet. And what does uh, that I'm do? I'm not telling you, that, that, you know, that, that, there's, that there's a lot of credence. There's a lot of credence in what you're saying out here, because if you happen to go, and, and let me tell you, for the folks that are listening, whether live or in the archive, please, during this holiday, holiday season, go out to the malls and observe observe these teenage girls, not even teenage, what would a uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old that are scantily clad. I mean, it's a damn pedophile's no. playground out in this sick joint out here. I mean, whatever happened to morality back in America? They they know. They, they're very aware. It has nothing to do with you telling them to go out. They already know this. 
but there's nothing they'll do about it because they're afraid. What are they, they afraid? They're definitely of? afraid. Well, what, what are these morons afraid of to allow sexual depravity in this fashion? They're afraid of giving up the illusion, which, as silly as it sounds, they are afraid to give up this illusion, this realm that doesn't exist, never existed. Now, you got some people here in the chat room, and I'm, and I'm watching. Hold on a second. You got, you got people. Hold on a second. Hold on just a second. You've got people in the chat room here saying that, you know, what you're talking is nothing but a bunch of New Age hooey. Uh, what I alluded to earlier. What, what do you have to the people that are sitting there saying this is a bunch of new age crap about you uh, talking a bunch of gargle about uh, people being hypnotized by the dollar? What do you have to say about that? It doesn't really matter because I'm sure in their normal everyday lives they have to work to eat, and as long as they have to eat, they have to do something to maintain and get that paper, whether they're brainwashed or not. They'll do it anyway. And there's nothing they can do to stop their children and their children's children from doing it. Because I have given up my existence because, if, look, look at these people. Why fight for them? They don't care. They're sitting there in the chat room saying this is New Age uh, Huey or whatever that's supposed to mean. It doesn't matter what they say because all they have now is complaining. And complaining does nothing it's like drinking the poison and expecting somebody else to die. That's what they're doing. And it doesn't really matter because they're pleased to be stupid and they're taught to be nothing. And their children will be definitely a mirror image of them. And it doesn't matter what they say to me or what they say to you. What matters is what they say to their children. And they're not saying anything to their children. Yeah, and well, that's why they're afraid to tell their children anything. And their children go out and they become a part of society that just wants to swallow them whole. And that's all that would happen. That's all that will happen. I mean, look, these people that are saying this is New Age Huey, apparently they don't read history and where it came from and where it's going. They're not, they don't cross-reference. They're not seeing the process of elimination. They don't understand. They don't use their mind. They just sit there and watch television, play video games and movies. And they let the Hollywood of wizardry and revision dictate their lives. So it doesn't matter what they say. This is what I'm saying, and I'm sure you understand that. These people, instead of, uh, you know, conversing with themselves, what can we do better? What can, like John F. Kennedy said, I hate to bring this up, but that's not what can, you can do for yourself. That's what you can do for your country. They don't even ask what they can do for themselves. They just let the corporations ask what they can do for the American people. And that's why it's RoboCop 2 in modern-day society. Corporations will take over states. People will have to bow down forcefully or go on the ground or go into the jungle. And, my friend, the rule of law has already taken over the law of the jungle. Now it's the so, biological law that we're taking over. And look so, at them. So I mean, wh wh what are we witnessing here? What are we witnessing here? Are we witnessing the transition? I mean, is this what they talk about when, you know, they, they talk about these Orwellian-type uh, scenarios? In your opinion, you're, you're saying that we are seeing the transition of what we knew of as America, democ or, uh, uh, the Constitutional Republic, uh, free market society, all the that. The 17th is Amendment, my friend, uh, the 17th Amendment, the ability to lobby, that opens up the Constitution, everything that kept everybody free. They don't understand. Once the Constitution has gone, their lives are dictated by bequeathed the wealth. Their lives are dictated by bequeathed wealth. Oh, you're, you're staticking up there. You're, 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 you're staticking up there. Their lives are dictated by bequeathed wealth. He who has the money has the power. If a person doesn't like these people that are saying, oh, New Age Huey, and they know that their lives are in shambles and they need a paycheck to get to the next week, well, all we got to do is say, sorry, uh, we, we don't need you, we let you off, and you're on the street. So, and what are you going to do with your children? You're going to have to leave them with the state, or if they catch you on the street with a child, they'll take them away from you, and you will have no rights and no choice. These so, people just sit around and say, okay, as long as it doesn't happen to me, I'm okay. But what they don't understand is if they allow it to happen to other people, 
it's eventually going to happen to them. It's only a process of elimination. It's like giving so, this, this society is like giving a hundred people uh, one dollar and hold saying on, hey, the next month I want a hundred and five dollars back because of tax that was not printed out and the Federal Reserve, which overtook America, these entities of international bankers and elitists, which took their lives, all right, all right. with so, stock numbers so, on everybody, on and then now, the next month somebody's they're not going to be had with five dollars because it's not in rotation. The extra five dollars, right, a right. on a hundred, and somebody's going to foreclose. Somebody's going to lose a house. Somebody's going to lose it. a car. We, we get it. All right, now. Are, are you saying capitalism is bad for society? Are, is that what you're saying? Capitalism is bad? Capitalism is good for rich people. People that can manipulate the lives of, how would you say, the peasantry. So is that a good thing or a bad thing in your eyes? I would I would have to say that I would have to say it's a good thing for me, but it's a bad thing overall. It's a bad thing for society. It's a bad thing for the Amer- what the American people once stood for. But it will be good for me. It will be definitely good for me. People like me will have a field day, and everyone else will suffer. It's not good for them, and I do pity them. I pity them because they have no idea. They let their lives hang in the balance. They let their lives hang in the balance. And there's nothing that they'll do to switch the set of that scenario for themselves. They will not stand up, and they will not go into the jungle. They will not start a new life for themselves. They will not do anything but comply. Well, I, you because know, that's all they know. That's the, all they know. Well, it's been interesting commentary, man. i got about uh, 15, 13 minutes left in the program. You want to leave the people with any more uh, side notes? Because I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Okay, from the bottom of my heart, just for a care of humanity, the little that I have left because I've just completely given up, I suggest that you people listen to this man, listen to this Mr. Mister Goat, or I don't know your name, so I'll just call you by your alias. But you, need, you people really need to listen to him because, sure, my life will be better because the more poor people there are, the more money that we have. And what's going to happen is, you guys are just going to be mind surf if you not already are. You definitely all are already mind surf and death slaves. And it just goes to show you that people will only wake up at the end, but in real life, there are no continues. There's only game overs, and you have to live with it for the rest of your life and generation to generation to pass. For the sake of your children, you, all of you really need to tap into yourselves and, and understand that you are beautiful individuals you have more whole principles and follow them. You know, put a seal and put an adhesive on your family and then and, and stick by what you stand for because if you don't, it will be the end of your time as you know it. And it will be too little too late. Well, I, I want to thank you for calling in, sir. You provided some decent commentary. And, uh, I mean, it was interesting, neurotic, and uh, nutty, yet insightful. And I really appreciate it. Thank you for calling up, sir. All right. Have an illumined day. Well, that was some definite and interesting commentary, folks. Uh, I really didn't expect that call. I actually thought this was going to be an hour and a half of me ranting and raving because usually most folks don't have the testicular fortitude to actually get on the telephone and give me a ring out here to give me a piece of their mind, whether they agree or disagree. And uh, it's good to hear that people like this are actually out there, uh, even if it was a neurotic, uh, nutty, yet entertaining and insightful commentary. uh, I I decided to run with it. I decided to run with it, folks, because I am trying to understand how the American people can just sit by and, and they're just on their knees begging. They're pleading for their own socialism. They're like, please, give me another stimulus check. Please, give me some more money, big brother. And I just don't understand, as a true conservative, as a person who believes in the Constitution, as a person who believes in America, I can't believe that I am living in a day and age where this is reality. I I can't believe it, and I, I, I can't understand how you 
as an American person, can sit there and understand that what we're living in, this new corporate socialist America, you are just sitting there on your thumb, not doing a damn thing about it either. On the contrary, you're buying into this ridiculous Democrat-Republican malarkey when all along both parties have bowed down to liberalism and feminism, folks. It's the same crap, different plate. I am tired of hearing a bunch of nimrods bicker, piss, and moan over each other about which candidate has the bigger schlong head or the bigger pecker shaft. Nobody cares. All right, both of these morons, these, this Mickey Mouse election that we got going on, they're both for the same damn thing. They're both for corporate socialism. This is not going down uh, America's uh, path, if you will. We're going down a completely different direction, and everybody is completely oblivious. Everybody is a complete moron. It seems like they have blinders on, and nobody gives two rat's asses. That's why, folks, I come up on here every single time I can with sporadic broadcast in an attempt to facilitate some decent, true conservative commentary to folks that actually care about America, that actually care about the moral integrity of our society, that actually care about the fiscal responsibility of our government, of our politics, of everything. But it seems to me that nobody really does care. And that's why I let that gentleman who had been uh, talking here for the past hour and a half with us that's why I let him rant and rave about all his cynical jargon, because who in the hell knows? Maybe he's right. Maybe people don't give two rat's asses about America. Maybe people don't care. Maybe people would sell themselves and their children for a couple of bucks. I mean, is this what America has become? Is this what the American family has been reduced to? Nothing but a bunch of materialistic gain that you'd sell out your children for a couple of bucks? I mean, it's sure as hell what it smells like out here in society, folks. I mean, just look at the programming. I mean, just look at what they're feeding to us in this mainstream media. I mean, you know, in a little while they're going to have this ridiculous, stupid, philanderous, feminist, whorebag garbage, desperate housewives, where they're actually promoting women to go out and philander around behind their husband's back because, oh, it's the feminist thing to do to go ahead and hop on the pizza boy or hop on the gardener or whatever the hell it is. It's ridiculous. It's sick. And this is what the damn mainstream media is feeding to us. It's no wonder our children are all becoming a bunch of sexual deviants. It's no wonder we're living in such a depraved society that is so mindless, that is begging for its own socialism, that is begging for its own subjugation. You people need a lot of fire under your ass. All right? Because you people are morons. You're idiots. You're buffooneries. If you're just going to sit on your thumb and stick a Kentucky Fried Chicken Grease thumb up your ass and think, and think that things are going to change out here. They're not going to change, folks. They're not going to change unless you do what the damn forefathers said we have the right to do. And what did the forefathers say? They said that this government was made for the people and by the people, you stupid-ass clown. So start participating in your government. And what does that mean? That means going out and actually gathering people. Start talking to people. Discourse, you morons. Start talking about discourse that affects you and me. Everybody. All right? Let's stop talking about ridiculous malarkey that doesn't affect any of us, folks. That's what most political discourse is constructed of out here. It's nothing but crap that doesn't mean crap. And that's why it pisses me off, folks. That's why I come up on here with, with piss and fury and try to say political commentary from a true conservative perspective. Because I believe in this, damn it. I am a lifelong conservative. I am a lifelong conservative, and I'm proud of it. I have raised children, I have raised grandchildren, and I have instilled the conservative principles in all of them. Never in a blue day in hell would you see any of my children or my grandchildren getting pregnant as a teenager. Hell no! You wouldn't see that. But you're seeing it out here in everyday society like it's going out of style, for Christ's sake. And this is what's sick, folks. And this is why if you're a true conservative... If you're a damn true conservative, you need to stand up 
and not be ashamed of it, folks. Don't fall victim to this feminist crap. Don't fall victim to liberal crap, folks. Have some principle. Have some moral integrity, for Christ's sake. Because if we continue going down this immoral road where, oh, it's okay to go ahead and have sh uh, six or seven co children from six or seven different partners, it's okay to go out and have six or seven different divorces, oh, it's okay, two men are having oral copulation across the street from an elementary school, but it's okay, it's social evolution. I will be damned if that happens, folks, and if you're going to sit there and allow it to happen, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself. If you're just going to sit there and watch the infestation, the, the just, the, just the corrosion of nothing but liberalism and feminism, I want you to do something for me right now. All right, and I've said this time and time again, but I want you to do it again. If you happen to be one of these nimrods that are out here actually providing any kind of credence, any kind of substance to liberalism and feminism, I want you to get to your nearest mirror. All right? I want you to get to your nearest mirror, and I want you to look right in, your, in between your stupid beady eyes. I want you to look inside your soul, and I want you to ask yourself, am I a stupid liberal long hair? Am I a, a muff-dogging, a bowing-down feminist? I want you to look at yourself in the face, and I want you to spit in your face. That's what I want you to do. I want you to spit right in your face, and that's from me to you, for you not doing a damn thing about everybody ruining America. Because this isn't this is America, folks. This isn't the America that we used to know, for Christ's sake. And if you want to fool yourself into believing that it still is, you're a stupid jerk dick. And I'm sorry to be so vulgar, folks, but let me tell you, vulgarity is low on the totem pole in this day and age when you can literally have women's breasts exposed to you on primetime television out here. I mean, I mean, I didn't get the memo, I didn't get a damn email, I didn't get the facts that, you know, we're just going to go ahead and expose women's breasts on, on primetime television during family television hour. We're just going to go ahead and pop those out. This is what I'm talking about, folks. If you're a conservative, be a conservative, damn it. Don't sell out to this feminist crap. And I'm talking to the true conservatives out there. I'm talking about the conservatives who understand that, hey, this multiple different children from multiple different fathers, this, this multiple divorce crap, all this garbage, it needs to stop. Do you understand that? It needs to end. It needs to go bye-bye. All right? And I, I believe, all right, and I honestly believe with everything that is my being that the conservative movement will rise again, folks. I, I believe me. I, I honestly believe it. I'm talking about the true conservatives. It will rise again because it's liberalism that has to debate why single-parent families should be the majority of the day. It's liberals that have to give that credence, not conservatives. Liberals have to give credence on why uh, children are being dumped off like, uh, you know, like there were pieces of trash out here, uh, 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 just, just anywhere. Here, I'm just going to dump a baby off over here. Dump them off in a dumpster. It's liberals that have to justify that. It's liberals that have to justify abortion. It's liberals that have to justify the, uh, the absolute desecration of the sanctity of marriage. It's liberals that have to provide substance for this garbage, not conservatives. Goodness is on the side of conservatism, folks. All right, goodness is on the side of conservatism and just natural humanity is on the side of conservatism. Even if you want to debate it here on an archaeological front, I mean, if you look at the archaeological evidence, folks, the natural essence of humanity was family. It was a man and a woman getting together, raising a family, and, and continuing on this dream we call life, this experience of ours that we're living in here. Take your damn head out of your clogged up colon pipe and start understanding that you have some responsibility in this crap. You. I'm talking to you. You have responsibility for this crap. The forefathers wrote the Constitution for you, you idiot. All right, the bottom line is, is anybody within the sound of my voice, obviously you have an Internet connection, go out and... Download the Constitution and print it out and put it in your pocket. 
You should carry around a copy of the Constitution everywhere you go just to show that you understand what being American is all about, folks. Anyway, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. This was a, a pretty decent hour and a half uh, program here. I want everybody to, you know, get back to me at ipolitik.net slash ghost. As a matter of fact, folks, why don't you join that little community? Uh, you know, the young man who owns it is having a little trouble getting some members out there. So there's the uh, website to my website, ipolitik.net slash ghost. And, uh, you know, join a membership, do whatever you have to do, because I will be on there from now on, folks. And uh, keep up to date with the program and through that website, because these are sporadic programs that I'm putting out out here. There is no set schedule. And if you're listening to me live or in the archive, I really appreciate your patronage, folks. I'm talking to the true conservatives, and anybody who appreciates my commentary, I thank you for listening. All right, folks? But until then... Uh, long live the conservative movement and death, 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 death to feminism and liberalism. Thank you very much, folks. Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. Tender, slow roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere.